Welcome back to how to become a professional poker player. My name is Andreas and in this video I'm going to teach you about basic poker math and I'm going to give you a five-step guide on how to learn any new poker game. Let's get into it. The first step you want to take is you want to learn about how often you get dealt a hand in any poker game. We're going to look at it as an example of No Limit Hold'em but let's get to the second step first. The second step is going to be what your equity is with a hand versus a hand. The third one, how often you get dealt a range. You want to know how often you get dealt a good hand. And also you want to know how often your opponent picks up those good hands. And then last but not least, you want to also know how often or how much you should bet with your hands and then also how often that needs to work. Let's get into the first step. You know, let me told them there's uh, 1,326 combinations. 12 of them are offsuit. This represents a little bit more than 70% of our range, for example, ace-king offsuit. We don't have as many suited combinations. We only have about a quarter of all hands being suited. And we got a couple of pocket pairs also, which represent about 6% of our overall range. This is also specifically important if you want to learn a new game like Pot Limit Omaha. You want to figure out how often a hand is paired, double suited or single suited. The second thing you want to learn about is how often you win with a certain hand against another. Here in Ultimate Hold'em, if you have deuces against ace-king, you would win about 52% of the time. And with 6-7 suited only 42% uh, of the time. But it's very close, you know, if those uh, two hands go all in against each other, which hand is going to win. Also, if you are dominated and your opponent has a bigger pair, you only have 18% to win with deuces against kings. And with ace queen against ace uh, ace queen against ace king, you're dominated again, uh, almost as badly as in deuces versus kings. You have only 26% to win against ace king, uh, having a better kicker, uh, sharing the common card of an ace here. How do you figure these things out? Well, in any poker game, you can also run it in Pot Limit Oma. You can go to propos.com/simulations, and then you can choose a game run hands against each other and learn about the equities of these. And this is a really important step you have to take in any poker game. You have to understand how often a hand wins against another one. The third step, if you want to learn a new game, is you have to understand how often you get dealt a range. For example, queens plus, ace, king plus, how often do you get dealt this hand? If you don't know it, ask yourself first, stop the video real quick, and then come back to it. The answer to that is it's going to be 2.5% of the time you get dealt these powerful hands in no limit hold'em. If you want to look at very good hands, for example, eights are better, ace queen are better, ace 10 suited are better, or check 10 suited are better, which is basically Broadway suited or eights plus, um, and then the ace queen is king. This is going to be 8% of all your holdings. So you have to wait uh, about 12 hands to get one of these very strong hands to play, which you can play from all positions unless somebody already re-raised before the flop. Now, you can also figure this out by using the option on Provocadules to count the hands. So you can type in Queen's Plus and Ace King and hold them, and then you can count the hands, and you will find answers to those questions uh, for free on Provocadules.com as well. The next step is going to be well, now you have to ask yourself when you have, for example, a decent hand and you're on, in, under the gun in a six max lineup, and you have five opponents, MP, cutoff, button, and the blinds. How often your hand is going to run into a very strong hand? I selected queens plus here because in No Limit Hold'em, um, you know, trying to beat queens, kings, or aces is very difficult with almost all the holdings. I'm going to have a look at some uh, removal effects here. When we have tens, ace five suited, and ace king, the chances of being up against a very strong hand are actually different. For tens, we have a chance of running into queens or better of about seven percent. With ace five suited, that drops. Uh, quite a bit to 6% and with ace king it's only back down to 5% roughly that we run into uh, queens or better. Why is that the case? Um, maybe if you're new to this channel or new to uh, to poker or no limit hold'em in general, well if you have an ace um, your opponent has many less combinations. For example if you have ace five suited the chances of your opponent having aces in particular is only um, you know it's the, he's only going to have three combinations instead of six because you have one of the aces uh, that he could hold. For ace-king, it's even more so the case because now he can have also less combinations of pocket kings and you remove uh, the potential of opponents having one of those strong hands. So um, this is something you have to learn about any game. For example, in Pot Limit Oma, that ace is very central. If you have an ace in your hand, 
the, the chances of your opponent picking up aces is going to be reduced by 50% in Omaha. So that is, uh, you know, quite crucial when it comes to your preflop hand selection. So that's why this poker step has to be taken in any poker game as well. But what are the chances when we're on the button? And there we already learned something about, you know, position and how many opponents there are left and why we can play so many more hands on the button in any poker game. Well, now, if we have those three holdings with pocket tens, only 3% of the time we're running to queens are better. With ace five suited, only 2.5%. And with ace king, if we raise 50 times, only one of those 50 times we would run into uh, queens, kings or aces. Uh, and against queens, we even have a coin flip. So you can see the power of having ace king here on the button because we would run into a very strong hand so infrequently, um, only having two opponents left. So this is something you should pick up if you learn a new poker game as well um, and see on which position you're going to face uh, a certain range. The last step I wanted to teach you guys is you have to look at fold equity math. And that's really basic for any poker game, but uh, let's have a look at it. For example, uh, if you choose the half pot size bet option and you, if you get called, you never win, it has to work about a third of the time. But if you use a pot size bet, you basically risk a lot more money. It has to work half the time uh, for you to turn a, a profit if your opponent folds like, yeah, 50% of the time or more. We call that pure bluffing. If we have 0% of winning, if we get called, it's just a bluff. However, we have also a second option. For instance, if, our, if we have 20%, uh, you know, of, uh, we win 20% of the time if our opponent calls us, well, then our half pot size bets don't have to work that often at all. If our opponent never raises us, in fact, if we bet for half pot, it only has to work 9% of the time. So if, if your opponent doesn't call more than 90% of the time, nine out of 10, we can just make a profitable bet here for half pot. For full pot size bet, we ha it has to work a little bit more often because now we risk so much more compared to the pot. But still, you know, it only needs to work about, you know, a third of the time here to turn a profit if we have additional equity. This applies especially for semi-bluffing spots, of course, in No Limit Hold'em. When we're on the turn and, for example, we have a, a weak draw and we think about, uh, you know, putting in another bet, it doesn't have to work that often if we can still win on some rivers. So that's why semi-bluffing is such a powerful tool. I hope you guys enjoyed this introduction of basic poker math and understand that these five steps are very crucial to figuring out a new game, whether it's Nolim Totem, Potemid Oma, or Deuce to Seven Single Draw. You have to go through those five steps if you want to learn a new poker game. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel for more content coming up in the future. This has been Andreas. I hope you guys enjoyed it. See you next time.